Hello, I'm James Wahlberg, and I'm going to show you something really cool. How to set up an ice table. No, I'm not talking about building a table out of frozen water, but rather how to set up and use a tool that's very useful in understanding chemical equilibrium systems. Let's take a look. The name ice table comes from the first letters of the words initial, change, and equilibrium. Because what we'll do in an ice table is set up a way to keep track of each of these aspects of an equilibrium system. Ice tables are really useful for understanding and calculating KEQs or the concentrations of reactants or products and even the amount of change that each of these things undergoes in the process of setting up an equilibrium. So ice tables are a very very flexible tool and what that means is that for any particular problem you need to look at what you're given, look at where you're trying to go or what you're trying to solve for, and then work your way through the table understanding the relationships. So the components that you'll need to set up a nice table may include a KEQ expression. You also may be given or need to find the initial concentrations of reactants or products. Likewise, you may be given or need to find the changes in the concentrations of reactants and products. And finally, you may need to find or be given an expression of the equilibrium concentrations of reactants or products. The thing is, is that it all depends on the particulars of the situation, and the ice table is a very flexible, powerful tool to work your way through these problems. Let's look at a particular example. In this case, we have a chemist performing a reaction by adding four moles of N2O4 to a 10 liter flask and heating it to 407 Kelvin to kick off the reaction. There we have the equilibrium expression. We know that one mole of N2O4 gives us two moles of NO2. So there's a one to two stoichiometric relationship. We know that once the system reaches equilibrium, the flask contains a concentration of NO2 equal to 0.525 molar. So our task is to set up an ice table for this reaction. So first of all, here's the table. We've got one row where we list the reactants and products. Here we have just one of each. Another row where we'll enter or find the initial concentrations of reactants or products. A third row where we'll either enter or calculate the changes in these concentrations. And a final row in which we'll either enter or calculate the concentrations and equilibrium of the reactants and products. So in this case, let's start with what we know. We know there's four moles of our N2O4 reactant, and that is in a space of 10 liters. Therefore, the number of moles per liter is 0.4. For our product, initially, we have none present at all. Therefore, our initial concentration of NO2 is zero. The final piece of information we have to enter is the equilibrium concentration of the NO2 gas. So we'll put that concentration down in that lower right corner. Now, since the column for the product, the NO2, is the initial, the change, and the equilibrium, we could call the change x. This won't be a very hard calculation because we started with zero, but it's useful to think of it as the unknown x. And that's useful because now if we bring in the stoichiometric relationship between the concentration of the product and the concentration of the reactant, you can see that for every X mole of NO2, we started out with half of a mole or X divided by two moles of the reactant N2O4. So the relationship here based on the stoichiometry is one to two or half to one, depending on how you want to say it. So notice how that gives us a very simple algebraic expression that lets us solve for the actual change of the NO2 product in the course of setting up the equilibrium. So if we solve for that concentration, of course, the change must be 0.525 molar because we started with zero. So how to go from zero to 0.525? Well, you have to add 0.525. Now for the N2O4 reactant, we know that there is half the concentration in the change column. So if the change of product is 0.525 molar, 
the change for the reactant must be half of that, or 0.263 molar. And now we're ready to set up and fill in our final cell, which is the equilibrium concentration of the N2O4 reactant. In this case, the change is going to subtract away from the initial concentration, because reactants disappear as the reaction proceeds forward. So we will subtract 0.263 away from 0.4, and calculate that we have a final equilibrium concentration for our N2O4 reactant of 0.137 molar. So I think you can see how an ice table is a very flexible and powerful tool to understand the changes and the initial and equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products. In the next videos, we'll see how to apply an ice table to find various things depending on the particulars of an actual problem. I'll see you there.